Uh, just give us your thoughts again on what, uh, how Gabriel performed. Dylan Gabriel. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, he played really well. Uh, uh, you know, same things I said after the ball game as far as being accurate with the football and being pretty decisive. There's a lot of little things that he can continue to improve upon that uh, will be big for him this week and, and, uh, and uh, just as we move forward, you know. Coach, to talk about another Gabriel, uh, Gabe, um, Gabriel Davis went head to head with a, a corner that a lot of people are talking about being a, a top NFL uh, pro prospect. How do you think he did in the one on one game with uh, number 11? I thought he performed really well. Uh, made a couple of huge explosive plays down the, the football field uh, early in the ball game, huge uh, third down conver conversion against man uh, coverage. And, um, you know, Gabe's a, Gabe's a special player. And, 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 uh, I think you know people around here have seen him play at an elite level for a long time, and um, that was a, a big matchup for us going into the ball game, uh, one that we needed him to win and, and make plays, and I thought he did that most of the day. Josh, do you anticipate uh, Dylan being the starter this week against Pittsburgh? <laughs> uh, he's definitely going to play. Uh, he's earned that uh, that opportunity. I, I think as we get further into our game plan today, we'll we'll decide exactly how we'll use um, all the quarterbacks. Coach, you said a lot about the skill players uh, this past, for this past Saturday. Talk about uh, in the trenches and how you guys dominated there. I thought uh, uh, on both sides of the line of scrimmage, um, guys did a fantastic job. Uh, we talked about negative plays causing havoc uh, defensively and living in the backfield and making the quarterback uncomfortable in the pass game. They did that all day long. I, I thought you know our two defensive ends played really well, and Randy and, and B. Hayes. Um, you know, those guys were, were special all day long. The way they competed and the way they played with great technique, too. And, and uh, you know, that, that group is, is a group that's taken a lot of pride. Um, they probably heard a lot of the outside chatter and, and questioning, you know, who and what they were going to be as a group. Uh, one of the, the question marks heading into the season, uh, I thought, you know, just in June and July, they dramatically changed what they were doing and, and who they were uh, physically, but also just mentally and how they approached every day. And, that's why they've played at a really high level here the first uh, first few weeks. Uh, this is another big test for, for us, for them, and for our program. Uh, this is a good football team, and uh, you know we got to prepare in a great way. Coach, obviously you have a lot of fan support this year, the student support. Can you talk about just all the students who, who waited outside in the heat <coughs> all that time to get in for the game? Not just uh, this year or, or this week. Uh, since I've been here, man, student support has been uh, – Probably better than anywhere I've been. You know, I, I had to think back just on, on that before I made that statement. It, uh, the energy on our campus is different than anywhere I've been. On game day, the energy from our student section. I, it, I mean, you walk out 60 minutes before kickoff, and it's packed from the first row to the to the top row in the student section on both end zones. Uh, that's that's a special environment that's created by our student body. Um, our players see and feel and recognize that. Um, recruits that are here understand that that's special and different than anywhere else they go in the country. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a special environment. And I uh, need them to stay in the third quarter. Uh, but uh, uh, other than that, I uh, can't say enough about what they do and the um, home field advantage they help create. Uh, Coach, uh, Trey Nixon, uh, did he maybe have his best game in a UCF uniform? He was fighting for balls and doing some things that maybe we hadn't seen very much of. Yeah, he's going to fight for balls. He's a competitive guy. I think he's just continued to grow. You know, a year ago was his first real live action in college football. Um, he's, you know, very meticulous in the way he prepares and, and works uh, to become the player that he wants to be long term, but also during the course of the week, just getting ready for Saturday afternoons. I, I thought he played uh, physical with the ball in his hands, you know, a perimeter screen that, that he knifes forward and, and gains, you know, a couple extra yards after contact. Uh, did a good job in, in, in the run blocking, um, you know. But that's something that he's done consistently this year. You know, a week ago against FAU, he was one of the guys that we showed uh, on a touchdown run. Um, you know, burying his guy in the back of the end zone. Uh, he's he's prideful and, and he's a special player too. Coach, if you could put what you had going on um, as far as an advantage into one word, would you say that it was your speed that was the difference on Saturday? I, I'd hate to to take it down to one word like that. Um, I, our speed, I think, is special uh, in all three phases of the game. Absolutely, um, you know. But I thought the other day, the, the number one thing is just how fiercely we competed from snap to whistle. Um, I thought we were extremely physical, and those are two points of emphasis that we we had to have on the right side heading into that ball game. Uh, apologies, I got another annoying quarterback question for you. So apologies in advance. Uh, 
Obviously, whoever's been in there has been effective. So the strategy <coughs> has worked, and the guys have gone in, been effective, and been comfortable. But it is a little different than the way you sort of anticipated things going back in camp, where you sort of thought that maybe one guy would come out and, and grab the job and would be named the starter, and you'd move forward that way. Can you explain sort of how you're thinking on that? Has at, at, the, at the end of the day, uh, as a coaching staff, you, it's your job to put kids in a position to be successful. Guys got to go out and earn it. And, uh, you know, you're going to put kids in a position to, to be successful. And, and uh, we're going to continue to do that, not just with the quarterback, with the 10 of the guys around them and, and our football team. And, you know, some of that's, you know, who they are and how they're practicing. Some of it's uh, what you're seeing on tape and, and how you're going to prepare for your game plan. And uh, you put all those pieces together and, and go play ball. Coach, you talk about Richie Grant's game. I mean, three pass breakups, leads the team in tackles. Seemed like, was that his best performance of the year? <coughs> He'd like one of those pass breakups to be a pick. Um, but uh, he played really well. And, and, you know, Richie has been really solid, too. Um, and uh, a lot of preseason uh, accolades. Uh, he's been really consistent. He's a guy that's taken a lot of ownership and become a leader on the defense side of the ball in the secondary room in particular. He's going to continue to grow in that role as well. But uh, pleased with how he put, performed this past week. But that's not saying I didn't like him in week one and week two either. Coach, you kind of touched on it a moment ago when you talked about atmosphere of the game. Just as it pertains to recruiting, you know, what's the early prognosis there? How is that going? And how much do games like uh, <coughs> Saturday help in that regard? Yeah, uh, recruiting's going great. Uh, I think we're continuing to build momentum. That's you know been the trend the, the two years that I've been here. Uh, as we go through the season, we're playing championship caliber of football. Uh, more and more guys want to be a part of it. When we get a recruit here on campus, uh, and you know they travel all over the place and been to a bunch of games. You know typically those guys start doing that when they're sophomore in high school. Uh, they understand how special this environment is, and, and we talk about it right. And coaches talk about it while you're recruiting them. Um, every school is going to kind of sell that a little bit. Um, when they come here, they realize that it's real and. Uh, there is, uh, there's bigger places, but there's not a better environment than here on Saturday afternoon or evening. Couple more, Coach. Josh, you, uh, you had an opportunity to get Brandon uh, in on a play <coughs> uh, on the goal line last week. Do you anticipate maybe whoever? Yeah, I had, I had other things in the game plan, just you know um, the way the game unfolded, and, and in part how Dylan was playing early, but also how they were playing. Um, you know, dictated just you know how the rest of the game unfolded. Had specific thing there that. Uh, in the run game that uh, we felt we needed to help turn the numbers into our favor. Uh, it didn't work out, put Dylan back in for the third down play. Do you anticipate you maybe having more plays for some of the guys, uh, not just for one quarterback, but maybe some, whether Brandon or, or Darrell, whoever, maybe in the future? Yeah, I mean, we certainly have those things in our game plan uh, every week. Um, you know, all the quarterbacks are real similar. Some of them have a little bit of differences too, and so you try to take advantage of those things uh, as you prepare and, and put your kids in a position to be successful. You guys have a dominant performance against another Power 5 team, and yet <coughs> only at number 15 in the <coughs> rankings. And everyone says, keep on winning, and things will change, and nothing changes. So what do you think needs to change for people to start taking UCF more seriously need, when it comes to Need more people ranking? like you. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> I can't write beat, that. <laughs> beating, the drum, beating the drums for us. I, that's the reality of it. Um, yeah, and nobody gets to see every uh, every game of college football. I think somebody asked a question last week on, on Monday press conference about that, and they don't. Um, so uh, people have to continue to, to tell our story. You know, there's multiple writers that I, I think are, are trying to, to beat that drum a little bit for us. Um, we're going to control what we can control. That's a preparation going out and playing. Uh, we understand if we don't win that, uh, you know, those types of things will go away real quick too. So. Uh, let's go out and control what we can control. Go play championship football. Go win. And, uh, you know, whatever happens, happens. Last one. Josh, what do you know about uh, what, when you're looking at Pittsburgh? What do you see from that program? See, they're, they're playing really good football right now. You know, uh, lost a close one against a really good football team here. Uh, and, uh, you know, they're playing well in all three phases. Um, they've controlled the clock some uh, on the offensive side of the ball, a little bit like Stanford. They're throwing a little bit more, uh, maybe just numbers-wise than, than Stanford is, but some of that ball control. Stuff. So similar style of game to what we were heading into uh, last week against Stanford. Um, it comes down to us, our preparation, controlling what we can control and getting ready to go play a good football, uh, football team and, and uh, on the road. So uh, we'll get ready this week. Thanks, guys. Okay, appreciate it, guys.